Good morning everyone and welcome to morning prayer on a Thursday. Uh, we're actually going to use morning prayer from Wednesday because yesterday was a special day and we commemorated Mary Magdalene. So we're going to use morning prayer from, from yesterday. So if you're following along um, and you would like to add the other readings in that we won't be reading this morning, the psalm set for today is Psalm 30, 3, 0. And from the Old Testament, our reading is from Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 14 to 23. And our Gospel reading, or our New Testament reading, that we will hear this morning, um, I have just completely lost it. It's Luke, here we go, Luke 8, 1 to 3. Just a, a few short but very important verses, as you'll hear in a moment. So here we are at uh, St John's. Excuse the sunglasses, it's very bright this morning, and such a lovely morning we thought mm. we would sit outside. And we're also here with Scylla and Sally. Hello, Hello. everybody. Hello. <laughs> Not in the picture, but right here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they've been doing present, some yeah. graveyard clearing up this morning, so mm. um, uh, they thought they wouldn't want to be in the picture. But um, I think they look lovely anyway, but there we are. So let's uh, prepare ourselves then for morning prayer. We've forgotten. It's also oh. Bridget. Oh, it's also Bridget. Mm. Yes, today um, mm. we're commemorating Some Bridget. Bridget. Today, now, Thursday. So Bridget. Andrew's going to leave it's, us It's really important. Over the years, the church has commemorated saints to remind us of uh, you know, the importance of uh, the example of, of saints through the ages, not just the original disciples and apostles, but actually all the saints of the ages. And today is um, St. Bridget. Um, a commemoration of Bridget, who was born in 1303 in Sweden, so she's very big in Sweden, um, and she was a daughter of a governor, um, and uh, quite a well-heeled uh, governor, and she started to receive visions and revelations, and was one of the uh, sort of medieval mystics. She went with her husband on pilgrimage to holy sites in Norway and Spain, um, and after his death in 1343, <laughs> she lived the life of a penitent. Um, receiving further visions um, and detailed instructions for establishing a new religious order. And so in 1346 she founded a monastery at Vatstena in Sweden for 60 nuns and 25 monks and established the Brigitine order. Um, she, was, uh, she got papal approval for this order. She was very condemnatory of all sorts of practices um, immoral practices and of, of yes, and of corruption <laughs> in the church, um, and and was quite strong, strong about that. Um, but she was best known for her writing and her poetry, um, and the spirituality which she developed through this long lifetime of of having visions. Um, there's no mention of her her death here, but um, there she goes, since Bridget of Sweden died in 1373. Thank you. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Um, so shall we go... Oh, straight into the reading. Psalm 30. You're going to do the psalm? Do you want to do the psalm? Let's do the psalm. We'll do the psalm. Psalm 30. It's only psalm 12 30. verses. Okay. And the refrain for the psalm, which we'll just use at the beginning at the end. Um, traditional to use it throughout the psalm, but we'll just use it at the beginning and the end. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. I will, will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you have healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Give thanks to his holy name. For his wrath endures the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, of your goodness have made my hill so strong. 
Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks for ever. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. Glory be to Father, the Father, and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Do you want to read our New Testament reading? So the New Testament reading, which is very short, is for the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. From Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. Soon afterwards, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Well, Mary, Mary Magdalene, she's actually one of the most, it's amazing, in a way, there's, there's so much about her in iconography, in, in art, in poetry, in music, and yet we know very, very little about her. There's lots of traditions about her, um, but we know very, very little about her. Um, she's sometimes confused with Mary of Bethany, um, the Mary and Martha, Martha and Mary, um, and, um, uh, but that's, uh, that's actually a confusion. So the Mary of Bethany and Mary Magdalene are two different people. Um, there's also sort of legends like you know, you've got sort of ignore Dan Brown and all that stuff and these <laughs> famous films that have been made that's that's not really um, very academic uh, material um, but she's mentioned a few times in the gospel and particularly most importantly of all at the at the resurrection narratives and we'll come to that in a moment significantly Magdalene was um, she, she she was She's often pre presented as a prostitute. Um, and of course, in the Bible, there's no indication that she was, actually. We just have what we've just heard in Luke, that she, she was seven demons. Nobody knows what those demons were, what the burden was that she carried, but she was healed. And from that moment of healing, she followed Jesus, and she dedicated her life totally to him. Mary Magdalene, the name come means from Magdala, and Magdala was a trading village on the sheer shores of the Sea of Galilee, just a few miles from Capernaum. Um, so it implies actually that she was a woman of means um, because she supported, it says she's, she with other women supported Jesus in their ministry. Um, and so she was possibly a woman of some status and independence as well. Um, and, but, but most importantly of all, um, devoted her life to Jesus once she was healed um, by him. The most significant um, story in, in, in the Gospels about Mary is of course at the tomb where she goes in grief and the, all the other disciples have left and Mary Magdala with the other Mary goes to the tomb and waits and it's to Mary Magdalene that Jesus appears um, and she's there and she thinks he's the gardener and she says to Jesus, um, if, if you've taken the body of Jesus away, take him, um, take him to me and I will, I will take him away. And then, of course, those words, he speaks to her, Mary, and she says, Rabboni, she's a teacher. Um, and she's the first one to see Jesus resurrected. And she says, I want to hold on to you. you let me stay here. And Jesus says, no, don't hold on to me. Go and tell the other disciples and witness to my work. And so Mary becomes the first witness, the first um, evangelist, if you like, um, taking the, the word of the risen Jesus to the disciples and says to them, I have seen the Lord. 
and that's hugely important as a woman in the context. Now you were talking about the women. Uh, yeah, you know. I, I think it, I think it, we often see the Bible as as anti women, and that's something that's that's happened over the years since that time. It's not uh, true of the time because Jesus actually was quite a a trailblazer for for women in the Jewish tradition. Men were the, the important um, people outside of the home and the woman was the important person in, inside the home um, for the teaching and the bringing up of the children and teaching them the ways. But they did have a voice. Um, but Jesus uh, really recognised the importance of women and many as followers, as Andrew's just said, were women. Um, we use this word disciples and sometimes we mean the disciples as in the 12 of them but actually the disciples were all those who were following and so many of them were women and, and we've just heard in that uh, reading about uh, you know, a few of the women Mary that of course Joanna and Susanna uh, who supported Jesus ministry and he wouldn't have been able to do what he did without those women and it was quite a thing that he had them following um, and there would have been many women following and we often also think of the writings of Paul because of that one verse in Timothy. Um, one tiny verse in Timothy, and we put women, all women down. Women shouldn't do this because of that one tiny verse. But of course, he, many women that he knew and nurtured then ran his churches. They, they were the women who ran his churches on his behalf. Um, we've also got the Samaritan woman at the well, um, the woman who says to Jesus, you know, even the dogs eat the crumbs from under the table. Those women are so influential and change the course of, of history. And it's only from years on in these 2000 years that we've managed to, to mm. put women down. And then the catacombs in Rome, you see quite yes. a few frescoes mm. and one very, very famous yes. one where it is, <laughs> where it is clear that actually the woman's celebrating that the person celebrating at the eucharist and this is a third century or second century painting is a woman a woman at, um, the altar. at the altar mm. um and, and there's lots of evidence of that sort of thing mm. so mary bernard of clairvaux called mary magdalene the apostle to the apostles yeah yes. um, mm. so that's, that's that's quite a profound thing and, and she she represents and in, in one way, she represents what she's become, um, the, the repentant sinner who becomes the key voice or a key voice in, in evangelism and also represents the, the healing and the forgiveness we all have and the capacity we all have, no matter what our weaknesses are for our failings, to be followers of Jesus and to follow him with the same uh, determination and courage um, and, and persistence that she did. A little bit sad that women still have to fight in the church today, but we probably won't go on to that one. Mm. <laughs> Sally's got her fingers up here, her thumb up here, yes. <laughs> yep. So let's um, say the responsory. Lord, you will guide me by your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by your right hand. And afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. So let's pray. So we're going to have some prayers which are set for this commemoration of Mary Magdalene. And so with Mary Magdalene and with all holy women, remembering also Bridget, let us praise our God and call upon him in prayer. Father, your son said the woman who was a sinner, said of the woman who was a sinner, her many sins are forgiven because she has loved much. Forgive the sins of us all and all who love you and strengthen your church to show forth your love in today's world. Help us to be bringers of healing, of reconciliation and life. To be ministers of perseverance and diligence 
and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many women minister to the needs of your son on his saving journeys. Open our eyes to see you in those in need or sickness. Hear our prayer for all who are in need at this time, in whatever circumstance, whether it be through illness, anxiety, grief, economic despair, conflict. And we pray for all who serve them in many ways and seek to bring healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our no prayer. prayer. Mary Magdalene was the first to greet your risen son and carried the news of his triumph over death to the disciples. Strengthen us to be faithful witnesses to the gospel in the world and grant your grace to all who preach and teach the faith. We pray particularly at this time for Christians who are suffering religious violence and persecution and all who suffer for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son called those who do your will his brother and sister and mother. Teach us to live as members of one family, united in faith and love. Lord, we lift before you our homes, our communities, our nations and our world that we remember, may remember that we are all your children under God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so joining in fellowship with Mary Magdalene and all your saints, we thank you for those who have witnessed a faith in years gone by and inspired the faith of millions through their journey, their discipleship, their courage and their witness and those who through quietly have inspired individuals and transformed lives and those who touched our hearts and lives. We pray for all who've gone before us. We pray for those as we sit in this churchyard resting here but also those resting in so many around the world and we pray that with them we may see your Son face to face in everlasting glory. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And the Collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son restored Mary Magdalene to health of mind and body, and called her to be a witness to his resurrection. Forgive our sins and heal us by your grace, that we may serve you in the power of his risen life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us and keep us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. So goodbye from us and uh, Scylla and Sally and uh, see you next week. Okay. Bye. God bless. Bye. Bye.